Now, let us see how to determine the joint torque for the, the different robotic joints uh, using the principle of the Lagrangian method. So, we are going to take one example, the example of one 2 degrees of freedom serial manipulator. So, this is a 2 degree of freedom serial manipulator, this is the first joint and the link 1, the second joint and link 2. The length of the first joint is L 1 and length of the second joint is L 2. The joint angles are theta 1 and theta 2. Now, here the, the, the link 1 is having the mass m 1. So, m 1 g that particular force is acting here at the mass center and x 1 y 1 is the coordinate of the, the mass center. Similarly, for the second link the mass center is x 2 y 2 and this m 2 g is acting here vertically downward and g is nothing but the acceleration due to gravity. Now, here our aim is to determine what should be the joint torque here that is tau 1 and what should be the joint torque here that is your tau 2. So, tau 1 and tau 2 we will have to find out, we will have to derive the mathematical expression for the joint torques tau 1 and tau 2. Let us see how to proceed with this. Now, to determine, so this particular joint torque actually what we will have to do is first we will have to assign the coordinate system at the different joints according to the d h parameter setting rule. Now, according to the d h parameter setting rule, so here, so this is nothing but x naught and this is y naught and z naught is perpendicular to the board and away from the board. So, this I have already discussed. So, at the joint 2, so this is my x 1, this is y 1 and z 1 is perpendicular to the board. Similarly, at here at the end, so this is x 2, y 2 and z 2 is perpendicular to the board. Now, if we just draw this d h parameter uh, the table, so it looks like this. For example, say if I prepare the d h parameters table, so, uh, so this is nothing but the frame, then we will have to consider the screw z that is the rotation about z, so by an angle theta i, then translation along z that is d i, then comes your rotation about your uh, uh, that x that is alpha i and translation along x that is a i. And here, so for this particular the first one, so this is the joint angle, so this particular joint angle is the variable theta 1, then d is 0, alpha is 0 and your the length of the link that is nothing but l 1. So, l 1. For the second one, so, the joint variable is theta 2 0 0 L 2. Now, this is the d h parameter uh, table. Now, if I know this particular d h parameter table, so very easily we can determine what is the transformation matrix that is T 1 with respect to 0 that is nothing but rotation about z. So, this T 1 with respect to 0 is nothing but rotation about z by an angle theta 1, then comes your translation, translation along x by L 1. So, we can express 4 cos 4 matrix which I have already discussed and if you multiply, so this will be the, the final matrix, the 4 cross 4 matrix which will be getting. Similarly, this T 2 with respect to 1 that means, I am here. So, I can find out like T 2 with respect to 1 is nothing but rotation about z by an angle theta 2, then comes translation along x by L 2 and these two 4 cross 4 matrices if you multiply. So, you will be getting another 4 cross 4 matrix and this T 2 with respect to 0 like T 2 with respect to 0 is nothing but T 1 with respect to 0 multiplied by T 2 with respect to 1. 
So, this particular matrix and that particular matrix if we multiply then I will be getting the 4 cross 4 matrix that is nothing what T 2 with respect to 0 that is this particular uh, the, the point with respect to the base coordinate system and as we know the, that this indicates the position terms and this is nothing but the orientation term that 3 cross 3 cross 3 this we have already discussed. So, let us start with here and then let us see how to determine the joint torque. Now, if you see the expression like the expression for the joint torque. So, we will be getting such a big expression for this particular tau 1 and such a big expression for this particular the tau 2. Now, this expression we can derive from the general expression like if you just go back a few slides then from here we can in fact derive the expression for tau 1 and tau 2. So, let us try to concentrate here. So, let us try to concentrate on this particular the equation and see how to determine that particular tau 1 and tau 2. Now, here there are two joints. So, C varies from 1 to 2. So, let me try to find out the expression for tau 1. So, tau 1 that means I equals to 1 and C varies from 1 to 2. So, C equals to 1, C equals to 2. So, if I take C equals to 1, so I will be getting D 1 1 and Q C double dot C equals to 1 in place of Q I will be using theta. So, theta 1 uh, double dot. So, theta 1 double dot plus uh, I equals to 1. So, you will be getting D and but C equals to 2. So, D 1 2 theta 2 double dot. So, this I will be getting from this particular the expression. Now, I concentrate here. So, I equals to 1. So, you put I equals to 1. So, I will be getting H 1. Then you consider C equals to 1 to 2, D equals to 1 to 2. You first consider C equals to 1. So, I will be getting 1 here and D varies from 1 to 2. So, it is 1 and I will be getting theta 1 dot square. Then comes your H i equals to 1, c equals to 1, d equals to 2. So, I will be getting theta 1 dot theta 2 dot plus then I consider like c equals to 2. So, h 1 2 1 ok, then you will be getting theta 1 dot theta 2 dot. Then comes your h 1 like c equals to 2 and we will be getting d is also equal to 2. So, I will be getting theta 2 dot square plus I mean I will be getting c 1. So, this is the expression for this particular the joint torque tau 1. Similarly, we can write down the expression for tau 2 also. So, tau 2 that means i equals to 2 and c is varying from 1 to 2. So, I will be getting d 2 1 like theta 1 double dot then comes your d 2 2 then comes your theta 2 double dot plus I will be getting here h then 2 c equals to 1 d equals to 1. So, I will be getting theta 1 dot square then comes your h 2 like c equals to 1, but d equals to 2. So, I will be getting theta 1 dot theta 2 dot plus h 2 2 2. So, I will be getting uh, h 2 1 1 h 2 1 2 h 2 2 2. So, I will be getting here theta 2 dot square and another term h 2 then 2 and I will have to consider this 1 also. So, I will be getting theta 1 dot theta 2 dot ok and your C 2. So, this is the way H 2 1 1, H 2 1 2, H 2 2 1, H 2 2 2, theta 2 dot square and here theta 1 and so this is ok. So, this is the way actually we will be getting 
the expression for tau 1 and tau 2. So, there will be 2 d terms and there will be 4 such h terms and 1 c 1. Similarly, here there are 2 d terms and there will be 4 such h terms, there will be 4 such h terms and you will be getting your uh, your 1 c terms. So, this is the way actually we can find out the expression for this particular the tau 1 and tau 2, the same expression I have written it here. So, this is exactly the same expression which I have written it here like tau 1 and tau 2. Now, I will have to concentrate on so this particular term that is d 1, but before I go for this particular d 1 actually what I will have to do is, so I will have to find out another term that is called u 1 1 and u 1 1 is nothing but the partial derivative of the transformation matrix T 1 with respect to 0 and this partial derivative is with respect to theta 1. So, if we remember the your the expression for T 1 0 for example, if you see the expression for T 1 0. So, this is the T 1 0. So, the partial derivative of T 1 0 that is your if you want to find out the partial derivative of T 1 uh, with respect to 0 that is T 1 with respect to 0 and if this partial derivative is with respect to theta 1. So, here in place of cos theta 1 I will be getting minus sin theta 1. So, here I will be getting minus cos theta 1 then this is 0 and here I will be getting minus L 1 sin theta 1. Similarly, this will be cos theta 1, this will be minus sin theta 1 0 and this will be L 1 cos of theta 1 and this will be 0 0, this 1 will also become 0 because this is a partial derivative 0 0 0 0 0. So, this type of expression you will be getting for your u 1 1. So, this u 1 1 as I told is minus sin theta 1 minus cos theta 1 0 minus L 1 sin theta 1 cos theta 1 minus sin theta 1 0 L 1 cos theta 1 and here you will be getting all 0 terms. So, this is the way actually you can find out. So, this u 1 1 uh, this is actually the rate of change of this particular transformation matrix with respect to uh, your only theta 1. Similarly, we can also find out u 2 1 and u 2 1 is nothing but the partial derivative of t 2 with respect to 0 with respect to your theta 1. So, t 2 with respect to 0 like if you see this particular expression like t 2 with respect to 0 like your t 2 with respect to 0. So, with respect to theta 1, so you will have to find out its partial derivative. For example, here I will be getting in place of cos theta 1 plus theta 2, I will be getting sin of theta 1 plus theta 2, here I will be getting minus cos of theta 1 plus theta 2 and so on. So, this is the way actually we can find out the partial derivative and this is nothing but minus sin of theta 1 plus theta 2. So, this is nothing but sin of minus sin of theta 1 plus theta 2, then minus cos of theta 1 plus theta 2 and so on and these particular terms all terms will become 0 and this will also become equal to 0. Now, by following the same method I can also find out the u 2 2 that is nothing but the rate of change of t 2 with respect to 0 with respect to theta 2. Now, with respect to theta 2 only if you determine then you will be getting something like your uh, with respect to theta 2 if you determine. So, then here you will be getting uh, like d d theta 2 of cos of theta 1 plus theta 2. So, you will be getting minus sin of theta 1 plus theta 2 and that means, you will be getting here minus s theta 1 2, here you will be getting minus cos theta 1 2, then this will become 0 and here there will be no contribution because here there is no theta 2 the only contribution will come here and this will become minus L 2 sin of theta 1 plus theta 2. 
Similarly, the other terms also we can find out and by following the same method actually we can find out uh, your what is your u 2 2. So, this is nothing but is your u 2 2 and once you have got this particular u 2. So, let us try to concentrate on the inertia tensor. So, these are nothing but the inertia tensor inertia tensor for the link 1 and link 2. Now, if you remember we have already derived this particular expression. Uh, so, this particular j 1 is the inertia tensor for the first link and we have considered that this particular link is having uh, actually your, your circular cross section with radius r ok and for that we will be getting the inertia tensor like this like m 1 l 1 square by 3 0 0 minus half m 1 l 1 0 m 1 r square by 4 0 0 0 0 m 1 r square by 4 0 minus half m 1 l 1 0 0 m 1. So, this I have already derived this particular inertia tensor ok. Now, similarly for the link 2 I can find out what is j 2 and exactly in the same way I can find out this 4 cross 4 matrix and this I have already discussed in much more details uh, in one of the, the previous classes how to determine that this particular the inertia tensor. Now, I am just going to derive that particular the d 1 1 term. Now, if you see so that this particular d 1 1. So, this is nothing but actually this particular d 1 1 term I am just going to find out. So, I am just going to derive what should be the expression for this particular d 1 1. Now, to derive this particular expression let me try to go back to this particular your the expression for d i c. Now, if you concentrate on this particular d i c that is the inertia term and our aim is to determine what should be your the expression for d 1 1. That means, i equals to 1, c equals to 1 and j is the maximum between 1 comma 1 that is 1. So, j will vary from 1 to 2 ok and now with the help of this I can write down. So, when j equals to 1. So, it is nothing but trace of T r is the trace E of u. So, j equals to 1 here and c, c is 1 here then comes your j 1 then comes u j equals to 1 i equals to 1 and this is the symbol for the transpose plus like T r that is the trace. Now, I am just going to use j equals to 2. So, this will become u 2 1 j 2 u 2 1 transpose of that. So, this is the expression for this particular d 1 1. Now, the same expression I am using here. So, the same expression I am using here for this particular d 1 1 that is trace of d u 1 1 j 1 u 1 1 transpose plus trace of u 2 1 j 2 u 2 1 transpose. Now, you see all the terms are known to us. For example, say this u 1 1 we have already derived j 1 we have derived. So, we know u 1 1 transpose of that then comes u 2 1 we have derived j 2 we have derived u 2 1 transpose is also known to us ok. So, each of these matrices are 4 cross 4 matrix ok. So, if you multiply 2 times, so then you will be getting finally, 1 4 cross 4 matrix. So, you will be getting 1 4 cross 4 matrix here and here also you will be getting 1 4 cross 4 matrix and here actually this is a trace. So, for this 4 cross 4 matrix, so what you will have to do is you will have to consider only the diagonal elements. So, by trace we mean the sum of the diagonal elements. So, we consider the sum of the diagonal elements here and sum of the diagonal elements here and if you just add them up. So, you will be getting this particular the final expression 
for this particular d 1 1. So, d 1 1 the expression for d 1 1 is known. Okay. Now, the same method we will have to follow for the other for example, say to find out d 1 2 once again we go back to the expression. So, this particular the expression. So, here d 1 2 that means, your d 1 to i equals to 1 and c equals to 2 and maximum between 1 and 2 is 2. So, 2 2 2. So, there will be only one term here. So, this is nothing but the trace of. So, j equals to 2. So, u 2 and what about c? c is also is equal to 2. So, your u 2 2 then comes j 2 then comes u j j equals to 2 and what about i? i is nothing but 1. Okay. So, i is nothing but 1. So, this particular 1. So, u 2 1 transpose of that. So, this is the expression for your d 1 2. Now, similarly we can also find out the expression for d 2 1. Now, this d 2 1 that means, i equals to 2 and c equals to 1 and the maximum between 2 and 1 is 2. So, there will be only one term because j varies from 2 to 2. So, you will be getting the trace of like u j is equals to 2 here and what about c? c is nothing but your 1, c is 1 then comes your j, j j, j that means j 2 then u j equals to 2 and i, i is nothing but 2 and transpose of that. So, this is nothing but your d 2 1 and I can also find out the expression for d 2 2. Now, this particular d 2 2 i equals to 2, c equals to 2, j equals to 2 2 2. So, trace of your u j equals to 2 here and c is also 2 then comes your j 2 then comes j equals to 2 and i is also 2 and transpose of that. So, I can find out the expression for this d 1 2, d 2 1 and d 2 2 and all the terms I know eh, and very easily actually we can find out the expression for this particular the d term. The way I, I, I discuss, so this is the expression for your d 1 2 and once again you write down the 4 cross 4 matrix here, 4 cross 4 matrix for j 2, 4 cross 4 for u 2 1 transpose, you multiply them consider the sum of the diagonal elements. So, you will be getting this is the expression for your d 1 2. Similarly, your d 2 1 the expression we have already seen and if you just follow the same method like matrix multiplication and then if you consider your the sum of the diagonal element. So, you will be getting the same expression as d 1 2. So, d 2 1 becomes equal to d 1 2, but d 2 2. So, once again you follow the same method write down the expression matrix multiply consider the trace. So, you will be getting this is the expression. So, till now all the d values I have calculated. Now, if I have got all the d values that means, your in this particular expression like your all d values are known. Now, we will have to concentrate on the h value that is your h 11, h 112, 121 and 122. Similarly, we have got 4 more. So, there are 8 such h terms and that I will have to derive. Okay. Now, how to derive? So, what we do is once again we go for the expression for this h i c d. So, here if you write down like your h 1 1 1. So, h 1 1 1 for example, here i c d all are 1. So, j varies from 1 to 2. So, there will be 2 such terms. So, this is nothing but trace of u j equals to 1 here and c d is 1 1 then comes your j 1 
then comes u j equals to 1, then comes your i equals to 1 transpose of that plus trace of uh, j equals to 2 here. So, u 2 1 1 then comes j 2 then comes u j equals to 2 here 1 and then this is your the transpose of that. So, this is nothing but is your h 1 1 1. Similarly, I can also write down the expression for h 1 1 2. Now, h 1 1 2 is what i equals to 1 c equals to 1 d equals to 1. So, j is the maximum of i c d that means 2 2 2. So, there will be only one term here. So, this is nothing but the trace of your u. So, j equals to 2 here and c d that is 1 2 then comes your j, j is 2 then comes u then j, j is nothing but is your 2 here and i, i is nothing but 1 here and the trace of that. So, similarly I can find out the other your h terms like your say h 1 2 1 h 1 2 2 and other terms we can find out. Okay. So, we can we can determine your other terms of this particular uh, h terms. Now, if you see this particular h 1 1 1 let us see how to derive. Now, this h 1 1 1 is nothing but as we have seen trace of this particular thing plus trace of this particular thing. Now, this u 1 1 1 is nothing but the partial derivative of u 1 1 with respect to your theta 1. We know the expression of this particular the 4 cross 4 matrix of u 1 1. So, once again we will have to find out the partial derivative with respect to theta 1. Okay. Then you will be getting this u 1 1 1 once again the 4 cross 4 matrix. Similarly, you know uh, this u 2 1 we have already seen that 4 cross 4 matrix and that matrix we will have to find out the partial derivative with respect to theta 1 and that will become u 2 1 1 and you will be getting this particular the partial derivative uh, uh, this type of 4 cross 4 matrix. Now, u 1 1 is a 4 cross 4 matrix j 1 1 4 cross 4 matrix and u 1 1 4 cross 4 matrix. Similarly, u 2 1 1 4 cross 4 matrix j 2 4 cross 4 matrix and this is also 4 cross 4 matrix. So, ultimately I will be getting one 4 cross 4 matrix another 4 cross 4 matrix we consider the trace value and if we just add them up uh, fortunately we will be getting this h 1 1 1 is equal to 0. So, this is the way actually we can find out uh, the other h values by following the same method like h 1 1 2 the expression I have already seen. So, this is the expression for h 1 1 2 and this u 2 1 2 is nothing but the partial derivative of u 2 1 with respect to theta 2. So, this is the expression and if you just uh, substitute the matrices multiply find out uh, the sum of the principal diagonal elements. So, we will be getting h 1 1 2 is nothing but this. So, this is actually the expression for h 1 1 2. Then h 1 2 1. So, this is the expression and if you just follow the same method and this u 2 2 1 is nothing but partial derivative of u 2 2 with respect to your theta 1. So, this particular matrix will be getting and following the same principle I can find out h 1 2 1 is nothing but this. Now, here uh, actually once again let us try to uh, recapitulate our purpose is to determine the expression for the joint torques like tau 1 and tau 2. So, we are following that then comes your h 1 2 2. So, this is the expression follow the same method and u 2 2 2 is nothing but 
partial derivative of u 2 2 with respect to theta 2. So, this is the matrix we will be getting and this is your h 1 2 2. So, this is the expression of this h 1 1 2. So, till now 4 h values we have calculated and we will have to determine the remaining 4 h values. Thank you.